brought to you by Games Corner. Games Corner is a unique console-based gaming experience with 3D and LED screens, all within a comfortable atmosphere. Become a Games Corner franchisee now and bring this one-of-a-kind opportunity to your location. For more information, visit us at gamescorner.com. Hi everyone, this is Ahmed al karimli and uh, welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business and lifestyle from tips, uh, by, through tips and tricks from leading experts. And today I have with me Daniel Aid. He is a digital evangelist and he is the founder of Pixelbug and uh, he's an expert in aug um, augmented reality. Welcome to the show, Danny. Thank you, Ahmad. Thank you for having me and considering me for this interview. It's my pleasure to have you on the show. What's the definition of uh, aug augmented reality? Augmented reality is, uh, in fact, overlaying uh, digital information onto a physical environment through the use of any camera-enabled device. So essentially what we do is teach our software how to recognize either uh, 2D images or 3D objects. And once uh, the camera understands what it's seeing, it will then uh, trigger uh, related digital content onto the physical environment. Uh, so as you would, uh, as an example, if uh, you point uh, your, your camera-enabled device, so either a smartphone or tablet, onto an image, uh, this could be a brochure, an ad, uh, or a um, or even a 3D object like a box, uh, then um, digital content will will come to life out of out of this uh, out of this image or object. So it's mainly what they use, like in the Wii or like this when they move. Uh, they use it in gaming and in which industries they use it mainly. Yes, so so um, gaming uh, uses augmented reality technology. Um, and uh, but what we do, we also use it for gaming, but we've adapted it to uh, multiple industries. And we, we've worked, um, we've used augmented reality uh, for industries like uh, FMCG, uh, like pharmaceutical, banking, um, even, um, yeah, banking, pharmaceutical, FMCGs mostly. But in gaming, like now, you're saying that uh, whatever I put the camera on something, then that like object will be showing in, in the reality through the camera. Yeah. But it cannot be uh, done in, in the other way around, that, that the environment will come out, out of the, let's say, the TV or the camera, and I am playing in that environment in a certain way. No, it can, and we, we've actually started experimenting with this. Uh, so, so this would be called more like virtual reality techniques. So you have on one spectrum, you have a virtual reality on one side and augmented reality. A virtual reality is when you take the digital world and you go into that world, and augmented reality is when you bring the digital world into the physical environment. But it's along the same spectrum, and we, we experiment with both. But you need the space, like if in case that you're bringing the digital world to the to the to the let's say digital walls, you're bringing it to the real world, and and somebody is walking, means you need uh, uh, space for that. Uh, not necessarily, because uh, for for those uh, types of uh, executions, we might use uh, head-mounted displays. So if you've heard of the Oculus, uh, the Oculus is exactly uh, what it does, is that through a fully immersive experience, it takes you as, as a human being into a digital world. Uh, and uh, we we um, are amongst the first to have re received the Oculus DK2 in the region, and so we are already experimenting uh, with it uh, as well as we speak. Is it a company uh, like uh, bought by Facebook or? Exactly. Yes, that's uh, it was bought by Facebook for one billion dollars last year, and so um, a lot of it uh, we believe uh, will have to do with. Um, being able to gather 
friends or, 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 or people in general um, into um, hyper-realistic environments uh, without having the need to travel anywhere. So the way I see it, or, or, or what uh, I, I can foresee happening, is that um, when the Oculus becomes uh, commercialized and, and that uh, sort of on the market, uh, you'd be able to plug in to, to uh, environments, connect with your friends through Facebook, and then um, be sitting uh, in the same room. Um, and and if, you, if you try the Oculus, it's so immersive that you, you, you literally feel like you've teleported somewhere else. And um, the reason for that, and this is just uh, if, if I may share my insight about that, is because uh, social media has been receiving a lot of backlash lately about uh, it not being social at all. That in fact it alienates you from people and from society and you end up uh, just uh, with the illusion of being social but all you're interacting with is a screen. And so uh, a lot of, there's a lot of um, studies, many studies and, and even uh, songs that are coming out of this uh, saying that social media is not social at all in fact. So this could be uh, a way for Facebook to, to sort of address this issue by, by really being able through a third party company, a tool, to be able to bring people together and, and like have the feeling that they're literally sitting in the same living room. So it's, that's the point uh, that Facebook bought it, not like mainly to focus on gaming, that they want to put you, let's say you select certain specific room and, and then you sit with your friend there and, and, and talk to them while like you see them through this device. And how did you get the device if it's still not yet uh, commercial? Well, uh, we, um, we oftentimes have uh, partnerships and, and um, affiliations with, uh, with tech companies. And so they send us and uh, they send us their devices ahead of time in order to test them and give them feedback. We do the same with Intel as well. Uh, so uh, with Intel, uh, they they send us uh, sort of um, uh, secret, let's say, uh, products they're coming out with ahead of time, and uh, they send them to us so that we can experiment with them, study them, start developing tools for them. Uh, so, uh, f for instance, we were we were in London uh, last month uh, for the Intel Innovation Day, uh, and and thanks to this partnership, we know ahead of time what Intel will be doing because now more and more companies such as Intel, Qualcomm, Facebook, um, we got the leap motion also uh, very early, um, uh, almost two years ago. We're getting the Mio armband as well now, very innovative technologies. We get them ahead of time because these companies know that developer, the developer community is crucial part of their success. So they, they, we get access to these ahead of time to be able to give them feedback and so that they can in turn improve their hardware and their, and their technology. How did you start in the digital world and uh, what's your background and then why you chose specifically the augmented reality sector? Sure. So, um, so uh, very early. I mean, um, probably um, when I was a kid, I was uh, always um, uh, tech. Uh, I come from a tech-enabled generation, obviously, uh, like like many uh, from from our generation. And very early, I started um, uh, hacking using hacking tools. So, <laughs> um, I started uh, with with uh, my uh, my intrigue and curiosity for for. The digital realm through through a curiosity to to learn how to hack and to use tools in order to uh, hack into my friends' computers when <laughs> before uh, so so in high school I used to in chat rooms uh, you know uh, develop and, and use tools to to hack into into friends' computers and and they think that their computer was uh, possessed and I was actually it was me on the other end playing around with their with their computer so it was just like um, just for fun let's say. And but you, you uh, were a successful hacker. 
not uh, so successful, thankfully, nothing illegal. You know, I think for a hacker to be successful, he needs to be uh, doing illegal things. But uh, no, no, with your should... friends, I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of times, uh, you know, they, they were, you know, not uh, didn't understand what was going on. So it was uh, it was fun, uh, you know, just a fun way to pull pranks, let's say. And then. Um, so, uh, you know, I continued my, my, my affiliation to technology uh, throughout my progression uh, and, and the eventually uh, was always, um, you know, geared toward a, a more scientific, scientific-based studies. And um, then uh, worked uh, in, in terms of career, a career path. I started uh, my first job with uh, Puma. Uh, Puma, the, the apparel and shoe uh, shoe brand, uh, where I was handling uh, all uh, their um, digital uh, marketing initiatives. Uh, so, so that's when you can say I started um, using digital as a as a as a career path, and I uh, I used very early on um, Facebook as a, as a marketing and PR tool. And so back in 2006, 2007, when, when Facebook wasn't uh, even regarded as a viable uh, marketing tool, and, and an anecdote I always like to, to mention is that I was on Facebook for, for uh, much of, of uh, my working hours, you know, just pushing messages, making people aware of events, um, and uh, telling people what's happening with Puma, but doing it on Facebook because I knew that this is where uh, our target audience was. And, and oftentimes, because back then, um, you know, Facebook and social media wasn't even regarded as, as a viable marketing uh, medium, uh, my, my boss would come to me and say, why are you spending so much time on Facebook? Get off Facebook, you know? And I'd be telling him, really, I'm working. I'm, I'm doing things for the brand. And, and so, you know, little by little now today, um, you know, Facebook and social media now even has its, its own uh, 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 job description. So, so that, that's, that's how you could say uh, I started really uh, delving into uh, the digital arena. And uh, there, you know, one thing leading to another, knowing how to optimize digital, uh, digital tools, how to uh, approach uh, digital problems and marketing problems. Uh, the thread led to, uh, to me using uh, proximity-based marketing tools, so using Bluetooth technology uh, very early on. Um, and using uh, tools to be able to notify people uh, using SMS uh, marketing uh, tools or so Bluetooth marketing tools. And then from there, the thread led to augmented uh, reality. Why did you quit your job? Uh, I never had a, uh, I wouldn't put it that way. I'd say why did I quit entrepreneurship before taking a real job? <laughs> because uh, I come from an entrepreneurial family uh, and, and uh, we have a very strong entrepreneurial background. Uh, so even uh, going out of university, um, I chose to go with a startup. So uh, my first instinct was to, to finish my, uh, my internship uh, to, to graduate, uh, I chose to go with a startup, whereas um, the dean of, of the university, uh, having um, seen the creativity potential that, that I had, was strongly uh, pushing me to go to Leo Burnett. And I declined, and, and he had, had uh, arranged uh, to, to have a spot uh, for me at Leo Burnett, so, so one of the, the best creative agencies and, and advertising agencies in the world. But I turned it down and, and because I knew that, that entrepreneurship and startups is what I wanted to do. So You studied in Dubai? Uh, I started uh, my uh, study, university study, degree yeah. in France. Okay. Uh, and, and then I completed my degree in Dubai. So I transferred and, and came to Dubai. American University of Dubai. Yes. And, and through that you learned about startups because in this part of the world, it's, it's like still we don't know what is startups in 2006, 2007. 
Yes. So, so, so as I was saying, the the um, startups and entrepreneurship was in my family from from uh, before that. So, uh, my father had had uh, ventured into several entrepreneurship endeavors. Uh, my sister is a founder of of several businesses. And so, and my uncle is also a very prominent uh, businessman and entrepreneur in Lebanon. So, uh, I've always been close to that environment, and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So, uh, but uh, after joining my first startup as an internship, I realized, uh, you know, uh, and and you know, from from strong. Um, persistence uh, by by my family uh, they were always telling me uh, you know this is what you want to do but it's good to have some sort of, of working and, and corporate experience before going full uh, fledged into this and, and this, so this was the advice you could say I got from my mentors at the time uh, and my mentors being considered like my sister for example um, be telling me that uh, even if this is what you want to do and, and it's good that you want to do this it's always good to have uh, experience with a multinational to know how, how you know processes work to know how you know uh, finances work etc etc uh, so to go back to your question uh, it was more like I was quitting entrepreneurship uh, than, than, uh, than uh, quitting a job and so I joined Puma um, uh, as, as my first sort of multinational experience and then uh, back and forth was jumping between um, joining uh, various other uh, startups and, and businesses. So after that I went uh, and supported uh, several entrepreneurs, businessmen with uh, early stages of their, of their startups and, and SMEs basically. Then how did you start uh, Pixelbug? Pixelbug uh, started out of an idea that uh, consumers and um, and visitors to to stands uh, to trade centers and trade shows um, visitors to those stands needed uh, more engagement from um, from uh, their offerings. So. so at the time, I was working with a with a company, so that was handling uh, trade shows and and, and stands, and um, I joined. And again, that was an SME, you could say. Um, I joined that company uh, to increase footfall to their stands because um, they needed creative ways to uh, to compete in, in a very competitive market. Uh, so I was brought in as um, as a head of digital to um, to create tools, innovative tools that were uh, that would attract and engage consumers um, in those environments, in those at those stands. Uh, so um, that's when really I started tinkering with augmented reality and creative ways to use this technology as a marketing technology you could say uh, as a marketing a digital uh, marketing tool um, so so um, you are three founders how did you find each other and where did you meet so exactly so um, at that point uh, I was already uh, getting the itch to start my own company so while I was working for 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 my previous employer and um, so I set up Pixelbug, and uh, and then when PNG, uh, I, I managed to secure PNG as as my first client, and when uh, PNG agreed and uh, confirmed that they would go with me uh, if I if I left uh, if I left uh, my company, um, my previous company. Um, so they were, they, they said, were aware that you are an employee and in case that they approve the, the project you're gonna quit your job and start your company or what's the story? Yeah exactly so so I went to PNG I was already working with PNG um, or or, um, or had a relationship with them and I told them look this is my plan this is what I'm planning to do uh, and um, you know, assured them that by doing this, I'd be able to take care of them better. Because what they wanted was specifically 
those digital tools that I was offering and that I was creating, uh, essentially, uh, they they did not really care about uh, the stand building part and the and the conferences part. So um, my thinking was, since I'm doing this anyways, I should be doing it for for my myself. I, I need, to, I should have the courage to to just do it. So I, I asked PNG, this is what I want to do. Do you want to come with me? And they said yes. Uh, we'll we'll come with you and we'll be your client. So if, when I had their confirmation, that was it. I said this is now or never. Uh, Pixelbug was already licensed and registered, and I started. Uh, creating uh, augmented reality uh, executions for them. And so after that, um, six months down the road, uh, Eli was the, the first partner that, uh, that uh, I joined forces with. Eli and I have uh, also a long-standing relationship. We used to be flatmates in Dubai, so we used to live together. And our path is so, uh, path sort of uh, separated. And then at that time, it was just fortunate, and we uh, we joined forces about six to eight months later, and then uh, Dennis joined um, to uh, one year after that. Uh, so uh, we were also uh, the way we found Dennis is that we were doing a project for his uh, company for his previous employer, and we saw him that he he was bored in his job that that he needed more um, excitement and and a new challenge. And he had a lot of potential that were not exploited, so we um, we poach, poached him basically. Why you chose Pixelbug as a name for the company? Is Bug coming from the hacking background? Um, yes, you could you could say that. So um, a bug, you know, you know what what, what uh, a bug is. So it, it comes from from that uh, that background, and then um, pixels. We uh, when. I was creating the name or trying to find that that special name. It was always needed to be short and and um, and quirky, and sort of bring a nostalgia back into uh, um, a modern and very high tech world. So if you look at our logo, it's it's like this eight bit pixelated uh, uh, figure. So um, you could say yes. Yeah, so uh, a bug what is comes from from uh, the the hacker background and a pixel which is in every uh, every screen and, uh, and a part of our everyday lives. So, and it's it's a uh, it's a uh, three syllables. So pixel bug, you know, it's short, straight to the point, and sticks to the mind. And and uh, that was very important for the name. What are the services that you provide in Pixel Bug in details? Uh, so. Um, what we do. Works. Um, that revolve around uh, four main pillars. So we have uh, augmented reality as a, as a uh, core uh, business. Then we do gesture-based technologies, uh, game development, and mobile and web services. So these four, what we do, are the four building blocks, if you want. And we combine them to create uh, new and unique solutions. So what we do is that we solve and enhance business objectives and business problems uh, using uh, those tools and we create products for specific clients that want to solve a, a, a specific problem using technology. Is it the main column of your income uh, coming through augmented reality or it's, it's because it's few projects, big clients, or you focus more on web development and the other things, app development? Our um, our main um, revenue stream, if you want, yes, uh, augmented reality is uh, a main uh, um, uh, business driver for us, uh, but it's never augmented reality by itself. Uh, we combine this with other technologies. The reason I'm saying this is because Augmented reality as, as, a, as a separate entity um, always risks uh, the, um, the label of being gimmicky. What we realized very early is that augmented reality cannot sell itself just because it's a, it's a novelty. It needs to be part of a, of a bigger holistic solutions. 
So what we do is combine, let's say, augmented reality with game development or with uh, mobile application development. So it needs to be part of uh, of a bigger picture for it to serve a purpose. So um, augmented reality as 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 a novel uh, technology is something that we've been using uh, and pioneering in for over three years, but we use it as as a, as a, a component of a bigger picture. What is gesture-based tech? Uh, Gesture-based technology is using your your hands or your body to interact with uh, computers in uh, new ways. So if you want uh, the Kinect, the Kinect is a form of uh, gesture-based technologies. Uh, a lot of um, the, the gesture-based uh, tech uh, solutions that we've uh, done were based on Kinect hacks. Uh, so taking the Kinect and and, um, and hacking it to create uh, uh, and build uh, software on top of it. Uh, so, uh, but besides that, uh, we've uh, now also been experimenting with Intel's new uh, RealSense camera. Uh, this is going to really change the face of computing because it's a tiny. It's the size of an HD camera, but with more powerful capabilities than the Kinect even, which is, which is quite a big device. And this RealSense camera, Intel will be embedding them in, uh, in over 60 million devices next year. Uh, so in, uh, in laptops, in, uh, in um, uh, tablets, mobile phones, etc. So uh, this is really going to change the way we interact. So basically, you'll be able to simply, by looking at the device or by waving at it, etc., uh, to to interact with content on your computer, and uh, literally slowly phasing out the the mouse because the mouse has been uh, in use for almost 30 years now. So it's. Um, it's uh, time to, to move on, you know, and this is the next step. This and the leap motion as well. Who is the main clients of Pixelbug and how much is the average of cost of your projects? Uh, well, I can't really answer the second question, <laughs> so uh, I'll just keep it uh, to the first one. But our, our main clients are mostly multinationals, multinational blue chips. Uh, the likes of Nestle, HSBC, uh, PNG. So uh, we mostly work with the multinational blue chip clients. How do you market for your services? Uh, because it's very targeted, like uh, PNG and high level, high end uh, multinational companies. So how do you market for like you do cold calling you 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 just set meeting up and then you go for a meeting try to close a customer how mainly you market for your clients for your services Well we use um, online marketing avenues uh, on one hand and offline on the other uh, so for the online part we'll use um, Google AdWords, Facebook marketing. Uh, we'll do um, you know also newsletters, etc. Uh, raising awareness online about what we do. Uh, two, uh, we uh, participate um, in a lot of uh, networking events uh, and participate in uh, in conferences. So that's another way of of increasing credibility and becoming um, sort of a, a source of, of, of uh, what we do, uh, authorities, authority figures if you want. And um, offline, um, offline as well, so we'll also spread those videos on YouTube, etc., etc., of the conferences and the presentations and the talks that we do. And um, offline, it's a lot of uh, re uh, references, network marketing, uh, word of mouth. We did do uh, some cold calling initially. Uh, but today, uh, today we were fortunate enough to have uh, a strong reputation and credibility in the market. So, uh, so a lot of the, the clients and the leads come directly to us. 
Do you think that the small companies or startups will have a share of your services or just like targeted to the multinationals and people who can afford these uh, technologies? Or you you still provide small projects, uh, you execute small projects like normal app or a normal uh, web development project? Hello, it's cut again. You didn't hear the question? I'll repeat it for you. Do you think that uh, the start, when the startups or small companies uh, going to afford your services uh, and have a share from your from the technology that you are providing, or you just like uh, if they will come to you, you do small projects, let's say web development, app development. Uh, no, we, we actually do not provide those types of services uh, as standalones. So we don't do just uh, web development or mobile app development as a standalone. Um, what we're doing now specifically in order to lower the entry barrier of adoption for augmented reality is that we're creating uh, pro uh, standalone products, a standalone product that will allow uh, brands, uh, if they want to um, to come in at a lower entry uh, level, to be able to uh, sponsor um, sponsor our our uh, or white label, if you want our technology, but without having a a tailor made solution, if you want. So it, it we're creating um, independent standalone augmented reality. Uh, products to allow people with smaller budgets to use the technology, but uh, as uh, as a, as a service, if you want, and do small configuration on it. Do you face any challenges in Dubai to educate the market? Um, there's always challenges uh, to educate any market. Let's say, especially when you're dealing with a new technology and uh, we were able to, uh, you know, with patience and perseverance, uh, then, um, you know, you, you just need you, you need to give it time because uh, more often than not, uh, people are very uh, reluct reluctant uh, to adopt new technologies just because uh, it's, it's a human uh, defense mechanism to oppose change the first reaction is to, to be defensive to technology, especially with the speed of its evolution uh, today. Um, so, but with patience, perseverance, and a lot of hand-holding, uh, today we see a lot of companies wanting to adopt technologies like augmented reality, not only in Dubai and the Middle East, but uh, globally. Uh, we were fortunate enough to go to uh, and present at uh, Inside AR in uh, in Germany. It's the biggest augmented reality conference in the world. We uh, we went to Australia where we presented our technologies and and uh, we realized that uh, even on a global level, uh, our our technology was uh, was on par, if not superior, to what was being offered by uh, tech companies in the U.S. or in Europe, etc. Uh, so. Um, what uh, we realized from from those learnings is that today uh, th there is no difference between being in Dubai or the Middle East or in the U.S. or in Australia because of uh, technology's capabilities to flatten the world and and uh, make the the um, the competitive level uh, uh, flat for everyone. Uh, it allows even us in Dubai to compete on a global level at at a very high uh, scale. And you serve clients from all over the world, not necessarily Dubai. All over the world, yeah. So so we've worked with companies in the U.S., in Australia, in Europe. Uh, yeah. So there there are no more barriers do, and, or boundaries. Do you boundaries. think that what what makes you survive now is the 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 marketing? Uh, department of specific global company which they use it for uh, let's say media and doing adv advertisement mainly most of the projects that I noticed that it's mainly advertisement uh, not a solution uh, for something because it's exactly. like something still new for the world so when they use it for interaction with the customers in the malls or in specific crowded exactly. places with the traffic it works exactly and uh 
we we were able to to predict this trend uh, very early so th this is why uh, we we are were amongst the first to coin the term marketing technology as opposed to IT because we saw that marketing was becoming more and more dependent on technology and so uh, marketing executives now need to almost have um, equal if not more understanding of technology than the IT department uh, because now we're in a world a very tech enabled and digital world so in order to keep uh, consumers and clients engaged and, and, and uh, enticed to use certain products uh, they, it needs to be uh, through the use of digital products and so um, we uh, we came up with this concept of marketing technology, and nowadays we even see uh, we even see in, in certain companies uh, the um, the appearance of chief marketing technologists. Uh, so so that also even even at at a board level and, and C suite level, companies are starting to understand the importance of having that type of designation in companies because now. Uh, you cannot afford to have a gap between the technology side and the marketing side. It's one uh, one thread. So so it's very important that, that that these two are connected. And this is what we 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 do, and 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 what we've claimed to do for several years now is to bridge the gap between marketing and technology. You work with some startups as a mentor. Uh, what's this experience have added to you? Yes, very good question. So um, we we are part, uh, and specifically uh, myself, I mentor at uh, Turn Eight. So so um, a part of the Turn Eight initiative uh, by DP World and in partnership with I three sixty. So um, uh, we were amongst the founding members of of Turn Eight and the crib, the space where the incubator happens. And uh, it's been a, it's a, been a great ride with uh, Kamal um, and Yusuf and all the guys from DP World to 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 bring this together. It's a very positive thing for uh, the the ecosystem and the Middle East and and UAE specifically. Uh, but um, mentorship uh, it was something that I was also venturing into as a way to uh, encourage and and promote entrepreneurship. Uh, but I have to say it's been a learning experience uh, as much it, it always is, uh, even as a mentor and who ev mentors, uh, wherever they are, should never claim that they know everything. Um, mentors uh, are specifically providing support and advice to aspiring entrepreneurs, but um, the, the flow of information goes both ways. Uh, the entrepreneur or the aspiring entrepreneur can uh, teach a lot to a mentor and vice versa. And this is where uh, ideation and creativity and innovation happens. It's just the mentor's role is to give a clear path and a clear thinking process to the, to the entrepreneur. Uh, but um, the inspiration happens both ways. And initially, that's why I was uh, very eager to be a mentor because Inspiration happens both ways, and it's very important to always be inspired. Um, what are the softwares or tools that you use in your business and life that makes you more efficient? Yeah, we, we uh, use mostly um, online tools. Uh, we're, we're very strong advocates of, um, of the, uh, the uh, shared, uh, shared system, shared economies, and open frameworks. So... Um, so we we'll use a lot of online tools to add more efficiencies to to uh, to our processes. We use tools like Asana, uh, like Dropbox, Evernote. So all these great uh, innovative tools that help companies be more efficient and be able to share information a lot quicker. We we've seen that helps a lot. Do you code uh, one of your like um, team uh, do the coding or you outsource? No, we do everything ourselves. And you don't outsource some of the projects? You are still three, uh, uh, three members no, in the we're, team? we're a team of eight now. We're, oh. uh, we're three uh, partners, if you want uh, senior, senior management, and but we, we have a full-fledged team. 
Where is your office? Uh, we are working, in fact, out of the crib. So uh, with uh, staying very close to to Turn Eight and and DP World, we stay we stay in that um, uh, that system to be able to always keep uh, cross pollination of ideas. Um, we always learn new things as we go, and it's a great space because uh, there are always new tech startups coming in. And so we we uh, we get inspired by them. They get inspired by us. The space is great, so that's where we work out of. So you folk like you are based in the crib, and yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. Exactly. Yeah. So take us through your daily life and uh, work routine. How how it look like? Well, uh, well, from from uh, waking up. From waking up till sleeping. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me from waking up till sleeping? Yeah, from from the first hour. Well, I wake up um, always around six thirty-seven. Um, I'll uh, I'll jump straight to my phone. That's <laughs> that's how I'm. Where I I mean, uh, the first thing I do is is I grab my phone and I I look at um, at uh, what's happening, uh, latest trends. I, I do my reading very very early. As you know, look at tech blogs and what's happening. I do that for a few minutes. Then, um, then uh, very important to have my coffee because <laughs> mentally I cannot function without a coffee. And then uh, you know, have a breakfast, usually fruits, very important part of the day. And then um, you know, just um, get ready and and uh, and uh, go to um, go to the office. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't. Oh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, very early, uh, go in, check on the team, work with the team, see what tasks tasks need to be done, uh, send a few emails, uh, make a few calls, make sure everyone is on track with uh, their their tasks and their deliverables. So a lot of um, a lot of uh, you know uh, management and a lot of uh, making sure that that everyone is is aligned and on track, and then um, you know throughout the day uh, we'll uh, you know either work on on presentations or work on leads. Then uh, towards the uh, end of the day, uh, I do meditation quite often. I find uh, it helps a lot with uh, recentering one's focus uh, and finding your, your your center of gravity. You know, recentering yourself it's very important. Uh, so do meditation, then uh, spend time with uh, my dogs, walk my dogs, and then um, and then yeah, just uh, just uh, either carry on doing some reading. Uh, I do a lot of reading in in, in my spare time. Uh, so, so the, you know, readings are very, very important uh, part of uh, of the learning and growth process in any entrepreneur's life. Other hobbies? Then reading, you mean? Uh, sports. Uh, I try to do as much sports as possible. Uh, movies. Obviously, I enjoy watching a lot of movies. Mostly, yeah. That that, uh, that you, you should can go call. to the cinema together. Love movies. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, back to the crib. Now you said that you're based there. You have a li trade license in Dubai, and you can link the trade license with the co-working space in the crib, or you should have an office. No, uh, we um, uh, we have a trade license in Dubai, but uh, we have an agreement with um, uh, with uh, the crib that allows us to work out of that space. And any company can do that, or this and is specific? any company can do that. Yeah. So they give you like the when the economy department come visits that this is the, the the office that you are based in, in order to save the cost of of renting an office. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Who's your top three mentors? Top three mentors. Do they have to be uh, living? <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, I'll say uh, Steve no, but, Jobs. Yeah, yeah. Mentors is like people who you oh, interacted straight. with. But oh, uh, I will ask you another question after that. Uh, okay. The three people that you are inspired by. 
Okay, I see. So as uh, direct mentors, I would definitely have to say uh, my sister Rana was uh, a very uh, big part of um, uh, knowing uh, not only what to do, but what not to do. So f learning from her mistakes in, in, in doing business. Um, I'd also have to uh, to say um, Kamal and mentor, uh, you know, uh, several talks and, and, you know, when starting off Pixelbug, um, uh, you know, uh, I met him through the Startup Weekends. He was organizing Startup Weekends. So also, although although interaction was not uh, very long, it wasn't sort of a, a, a systematic mentorship role, if you want. But through the short amounts of interaction I've had with him, I was able to learn a lot and through through his actions as well. So for uh, and what he was doing for for the entrepreneurship ecosystem as well um, and uh, finally third one I'd have to say um, uh, one of my previous employers uh, I was I was working in an American company so I had a, a, a boss who who also um, became very successful very quickly but also crashed very quickly <laughs> so uh, i was able to to understand um uh that it's very important uh, to um to keep a very conservative mode and approach uh at starting up because it's it's a thin line between success and and crashing so um and and just uh to emphasize on on this um I wouldn't say the three of them were, were, were specifically called mentors. Uh, I just happened to learn a lot from them just because uh, I'm curious by nature. And so it wasn't like we were sitting specifically week on week and they were saying, oh, okay, now it's your mentoring time. It was just like a, um, a natural progression of things. And who is the three people that you're inspired by? Uh, I'd have to say uh, one of my biggest inspirations, uh, Steve Jobs, definitely. Uh, Elon Musk, nowadays, a huge disruption he's doing. So um, seeing and learning a lot from him. And uh, Richard Branson, definitely. Top three favorite books. Top three favorite books. Um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Um, Einstein by Walter Isaacson and uh, Steve Jobs also biography of Steve Jobs also by Walter Isaacson uh, the most important factors for success in three words uh, never give up uh, the top uh, apps three apps that you use on your smartphone I use Evernote a lot. I use Facebook a lot and uh, Dropbox. What are the habits that you're trying to develop to stay efficient? And always trying to develop my people skills because uh, business is all about people. And dealing with people is, is can sometimes be very tough, but learning how to do that more efficiently is very important. So uh, dealing with people and uh, patience and and uh, remaining calm under pressure very important. Do you listen to any music when you work? I do not. No, I do not. Do uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't enjoy it, but um, no, I, I makes you uh, less focused. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some people enjoy it. Sometimes I do when I'm doing something more relaxed, but most of the time I prefer to just uh, put more focus on finishing a task quickly and having more free time to then listen to music or go out or whatever than to be distracted by music and taking longer, longer to achieve a certain task. Do you categorize your day into different tasks or each day is different? No, each day is different and has to be, especially um, as an entrepreneur and, and, and in our, our roles and our lives, um, you have to be uh, flexible. I know like there are certain guidelines of what I want to achieve, so I, I have sort of um, 
uh, goals I, I set that I want to to complete uh, in a, in a day, but I wouldn't say I schedule them uh, hour by hour just because it's uh, you always uh, there there are always unexpected events that come up and you have to be able to stay versatile and flexible in order to address each one. Do you follow any routine to sleep? Uh, meditation. So as I was explaining, meditation uh, before going to sleep or or uh, or in the um, in the evening, very important. Uh, and then reading before going to sleep. So that's uh, a usual part of my uh, pre-sleep uh, routine is to is to do the reading. What makes you really happy? Uh, inspiring people makes me really happy and. Uh, and uh, always feeling that I'm not working a day of my life because I'm doing what I love. That makes me happy. Uh, last question, how people can contact you? Uh, can, uh, people can contact me either through email or social media. Can you share your email? Sure, so it's uh, danny, D-A-N-Y, at pixelbug.com. Uh, on uh, Facebook and Twitter, handles PX, uh, PixelBugDXB. So on Facebook and Twitter, P PixelBugDXB. And, um, and lastly, on LinkedIn, uh, Danny Elaid, E-L-E-I-D. Thank you so much, Danny, for this interview. Thank you very much for having me. It was great. And, and thank you for the questions. And you're done. It's a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Be efficient and stay efficient and see you soon with another leading expert. Mm -hmm.